Hi everyone. On January 29th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of our Father among the Saints, Afraatis. Now the Holy Afraatis was born in Persia, uh, grew up in Persia, and remained a Persian until probably his early to late teen years. Now on top of this though, he actually despised the religion of the Persians and felt more inclined towards searching for truth the same way that the Magi did, who were supposedly of Persian ori uh, orientation, uh, after our Lord Jesus Christ. So he finally rejected all of the influences of his native land and headed for the city of Edessa, which at that time was a Christian stronghold. There he accepted fully the faith of Christ and became a Christian and was baptized there. Almost immediately he left and went outside the city gates and dwelt in a hut where he refused to eat anything but bread most of his time there and gradually struggled in the ascetic life to become closer to God. Eventually he moved to a monastery uh, near Antioch and remained there for many, many years. He would see very few people. Uh, he had very few friends. He would accept no gifts except only very occasionally. Many people would try to bring him food and he always refused it and felt that his solitary life was enough for him and was enough to uh, establish him in the faith of Christ and growth in the spirit of the Lord. Well, he lived during the time of the Emperor Valens. This was around 370 AD. And Valens, of course, was someone who was not very friendly to Christians in general, but if he was, he was very much promoting the heresy of Arianism. Well, Aphraartes at this point felt like he needed to get out of his monastery and go into the town and teach the people there what the true faith was. Even from his youngest years, even when he was still dwelling in the hut outside Edessa, he was able uh, to dispute with people about the faith because he had a gift for argumentation in the correct sense, not a passion for disputation by any means, but by someone who was able to proclaim the truths of, of the faith in a way that people could understand. And so he did this in Antioch for a long time. Now it happened just by chance, if anything that happens in the spiritual life can be said to be happening by chance, that the Emperor Valens himself ran into Aphraartes in the marketplace one day. Now, because of this, uh, he had definitely heard about Aphraartes and his ascetic endeavors, and he questioned the monk, and he said, why are you here? I mean, you've left your silence after all these years, and here I see you milling around in the marketplace talking to people. What's going on? And Aphraartes said, well, dear emperor, if there was a virgin who lived in a house and she found out that the house next door was on fire, what would she do? Surely she would leave her seclusion and run out and put out the fire because that's the most important thing. And so here I am leaving my seclusion, going to put out the fire of heresy that has been storming around the countryside and mainly because of your support of it. Well, as you can guess, the emperor was not too pleased with that remark. And in fact, one of his eunuchs even wanted to have Aphraatis thrown uh, into some sort of fiery pit or killed in some way. They were still thinking of how they were going to do it. But fortunately, Valens thought better of it and he let him go. Later on, that eunuch himself met a terrible death by falling into a bucket of boiling water. Valens actually heard about this and became very fearful for what was going on. But Aphraartes continued on his instruction uh, to the people and in helping people in any way that he could. Of course, the Orthodox faith is very clear on its teaching of the materiality of creation and how that material 
uh, is created good and that how it can even be consecrated for good as we see in the use of holy oils, holy water, uh, these sorts of things. Well, in one case, the emperor's horse was actually very ill and the person that was attending it because he knew that the emperor loved this animal dearly was very worried and yet he was a secret Christian. And so he, one night he brought the horse to Valens and Valens blessed some holy oil and said, put it on the horse on his belly. And in fact, Aphraites himself came and touched the horse on his belly with the oil and immediately the horse was cured. Valens was amazed at this the next day because he said, "How? who cured this animal? How did he get better? What did you do? And they were very afraid to tell him exactly what had happened. But finally it came out that Aphraites was the one who cured the animal and Valens was astonished by this. Yet, even in his hardness of heart, he continued to despise the religion of Jesus Christ and in fact was killed at a battle uh, just a few years later. There are many other such stories of Aphraites using uh, the material means of the church by uh, a blessing uh, which was given to heal someone. In fact, there was a young woman who was married and was despised by her husband who had taken up with a concubine. She was very distraught by this and went to Aphraites and he gave her some holy oil that he had blessed and then told her to put it on her forehead and all would be well. Surely enough, she did. She anointed her forehead with this and the next day the husband came to his senses, gave up the concubine and returned to his wife. So we see that the materiality of the things that he did is very much in accordance with what we as Orthodox believe, that these things are gifts by God and that we take these gifts and that we consecrate them and set them aside as holy and thereby they can work miracles for us in many, many, many cases. Also, it's instructive to find that uh, in this case, Aphraites went and actually anointed an animal because animals are considered gifts of God as well. And the Lord, who is very well aware of even one sparrow falling to the ground, desires that they too should have a normal and robust and healthful life because as St. Basil the Great says, they enjoy the good things of life even as we do. So there are many lessons to be learned from this wonderful early saint who teaches us all to draw near to the Lord whenever we can to make use of the blessings that he gives us and to never despise the material creation because in many cases itself becomes the means of salvation. Bye-bye.